know that the quest by superpower to define or to bring forth a, a new world or a new order uh, others instead uh, strained uh, international relationships and we know we see how even the African continent is gravely uh, or gravely at uh, affected by all of this development. What did uh, actually, uh, what went wrong and how can we fix this to ensure uh, that the economies of countries uh, can bounce back to normal, uh, that they can have a clear uh, trajectory and push forth with their uh, development agendas? The first thing uh, maybe to uh, question is uh, the notion of bringing a new world order. Once again, is that uh, a new world order in which we see more of a cooperation? Or is it a world order that is going to maintain the same status as we see in the world today? In other words, I will looking at the same world order established at the end of the Second World War with the inception of the United Nations. Maybe one of the critical things that we don't do uh, sometimes, I mean, we do, but you know what we are uh, a little bit missing in and here is uh, the structure of the United Nations today. We all remember when the later Boutros Boutros Ghali was uh, the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations, a lot of uh, changes, right, were initiated or were advanced in terms of even the maintenance of a peace in the world, for instance, or uh, the UN changing its mechanism in conflict prevention in a number of countries. But one of the uh, questions that uh, remain on the table still today is uh, the value of the United Nations Security Council. In the world that we live in uh, today, after so many years of creating, should we continue to have a body that has uh, five nations controlling or having the ultimate power to make decisions, whereas the other 188 uh, 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 countries make a decision, it takes only one of those five to go uh, another direction for that law not to go uh, to pass. Maybe the time also has come, especially for the countries of the South, again, in the same vein, the same spirit of what they did uh, in the 1950s, right? Uh, around Nehru and all of these uh, uh, leaders, what can be the new path that you know, what we are uh, charting uh, uh, forward? That's number one. Number two, uh, where is this that you know, uh, the current leading nations of the world are missing the mark, which is uh, creating uh, uh, what we are seeing today? If we take the case of Africa, for instance, the competition that you know, what we are seeing when it comes uh, to uh, relations with, uh, with Africa is at the same time or can be beneficial for uplifting the lives of so many people. And I uh, love what you know, uh, our brothers from uh, India said about, uh, is there any nation in this world that has to stop developing? And are the nations that are trailing to achieve that development? The answer to that question very definitely is no. Because even here in the United States, I'm part of the group called the National Digital uh, Inclusion Alliance. It is amazing we find out that even in the United States, over 25% of households do not have a clear and stable access to the internet. And we are living in the United States. Not to talk about you know, what is happening in so many other countries uh, in the world. So the notion of development is uh, ongoing because uh, as human beings, we are such, uh, been so endowed with uh, uh, creativity that creation Invention comes a day after day and day after day and year after year. However, what I want to say in closing this uh, 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 question, what is it that you know has been missed? The question is, what is it that you know we have missed since 1945 that we don't want to change? Listen, President Barack Obama, as a candidate during uh, the uh, 2008 campaign, said something that uh, reverberates. And something that you know he himself did not work on in uh, germany as a candidate he said this that he was in berlin that the berlin war crumbled down symbolizing a change in the world order but at the same time many other wars went back up 
what are those walls that you know what we've been witnessing till today it is the wall or they are the walls of uh, religious intolerance of uh, uh, racism as the professor mentioned earlier as the uh, uh, violence against the woman or multiplied ethnicism and another multiplication of other conflict that actually are separating human beings even the walls of migration today yes we talked about uh, free movement of goods free movement of ideas but ideas and goods are created by who by individuals what is the freedom that they have to move around so it is not about uh, creating a new world order but it is uh, the uh, advancement of this high spirit of competition in the world today i believe which does not necessarily take into consideration the core values or the uh, interest of the people that we say we want to uplift themselves reason why the world today is facing what a crisis when it comes to uh, uh health it's facing a crisis when it comes to uh, jobs it's a facing a crisis when it comes to uh, education how many people can have access to a laptop or a computer device when we know that uh, the uh, international organizations even label access to the internet as a human right how are we working with that human right and therefore there are so many things that you know what we have enabled as a human right that nation countries states individuals institutions and even us as human beings and social political actors should be working on yet we are not measuring correctly how we can achieve that and the crisis that we are mentioning we talked about the current crisis between russia and ukraine but let us not forget what is engulfing so many African countries today. What is going on in Mali? What is going on in the Democratic Republic of Congo for years, that are over four decades? What is going on in many other parts of the world that you know we are not bringing to light? To what extent the crisis in Ukraine really impacting uh, food production, for instance? Is it right for a head of state in Africa to say that the food prices are increasing in my country because of the war in Ukraine? Or should we say that the uh, food policy, economic policy that we put in place that made us dependent on what we should not be dependent on is uh, creating the problem that we have today? of uh, an African, uh, you mentioned earlier on, of course, the African economies uh, are suffering the ripple effect of the, the Ukrainian war, and it becomes worrisome that a sovereign independent state uh, can be disaffected today all over the world as inf inflation and the population is in dire need. Uh, of course, let's come now, uh, like, uh, uh, how can uh, African nations or African uh, stakeholders, especially policy makers across Africa uh, take the advantages eh, of uh, this situation uh, that is happening across the world to chart or to redefine a new uh, a new economic policies that will best uh, suit uh, the, the present context or uh, actually help Africa because we know uh, that the, the, the development agenda 2063 uh, that of course is well defined and articulated eh? Now, how can this be a success uh, or uh, uh, come to reality when there are no strong economic policies that can back up uh, every dream of Africans? So what uh, what can we do? We know, like I said, the lapses, the coming of COVID-19 uh, uh, expose uh, the, the vulnerability or the weaknesses of the health sector uh, across Africa. And now we see the Ukrainian crisis affecting economies also in Africa. So what can be done practically across uh, by stakeholders in Africa, especially political leaders, to ensure that uh, this doesn't happen in the nearest future? The first thing I want to say is that, you know, the civil society in Africa, uh, civil society organizations needs to uh, pressure the African government to change the narrative. Again, I find it very offensive for an African leader like Macky Sall to uh, make a comment, uh, travel even to Russia uh, to negotiate, you know, with the release of uh, wheat production because it is impacting food production uh, uh, and consumption in Africa, for instance. 
when you know that you know where people in Senegal you know were eat the jollof rice you know were profusely when you know that you know where in some countries in West Africa people rely on uh, 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 plantains for instance it is clear that you know where the African head of state today are uh, once again you know were put to the task of uh, reinventing or re-strategizing or restructuring the economies number one the uh, south-south cooperation here's another opportunity again we talked about that you know about you know a decade ago when the BRICS countries you know, were re-emerged uh more strongly and countries like you know india and uh, uh brazil i want to name these two in and here particularly amplified and multiplied their the cooperation with african countries at one point under president you know uh, ignacio uh, lula of uh, brazil brazil was the country that had the most uh, diplomatic uh, relationship uh, with african countries in the world surpassing even countries uh, from uh, europe and uh, the united states or north american countries it means what it means it was exchanges in terms of uh, construction in terms of agriculture when it comes to india India revamped around that time a very decade or multiple decades, you know, were old uh, uh, cooperation and collaboration with African countries by allowing, actually creating channels, facilitating number of African students to attend the universities in India. Bangalore University comes to mind because two of my younger brothers, actually my baby brothers, went to that country to study. This is also aspect of a South-South uh, uh, cooperation. We also know at one point, even before COVID-19, when uh, the uh, medicine crisis, and this was something in the late 1990s, early 2000s, but generic medicine from India became the panacea or the solution for many African countries because of uh, the pattern issue that, you know, uh, 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 Clifton, you know, what mentioned earlier, when it comes to the uh, uh, World Trade Organization and the issue of patents, for instance. So the South-South cooperation is one thing. The second solution I want to uh, uh, emphasize it in here is that the African uh, continental free trade agreements that uh, the African countries are working on. Many have ratified that. And then they are, of course, you know, we're working on the different mechanisms to date. And I believe that this is going to offer the... Uh, African continent, uh, creating the largest market in the world, uh, making sure that you know what you have uh, multiplied and more meaningful trade agreement and cooperation between uh, the African country in terms of uh, cooperation. Clarice, this is uh, bringing us to another thing. Today, when you look at countries like uh, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, cocoa is uh, the king of crops. But we know the conditions in which those are two crops you know, are produced. We know the unfair prices that the producers are getting. What is being done? Do we change that economic pattern and uh, come back to, I'm happy to see that a country like Nigeria has uh, uh, started to uh, initiate actually a diversification of its economy from oil to emphasize a little bit more of agriculture because it will be a continuum to be pointless to have all this oil production, but at the same time, spending a lot of the revenues from the oil production on food consumption or food uh, 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 imports. The other thing I want to mention is uh, the African workers. Um, Professor Jack Bishop from uh, India told us and reminded us that you know what Africa has, uh, or will have actually already has, the largest pool of young people, workers, People in a work, uh, working age, people, whether they are male or female, how do we tap into that resource? How do we make sure effectively that they are trained, properly trained, adequately to match the realities of today, maybe in the agricultural sector or in the emerging digital sector to capture and harness this energy for Africa, you know, what to position itself, it is a key. And then... COVID-19 came. We all know what happened. If you remember, the African uh, leaders at the uh, UN, at the UN, at the AU, or even at the um, the different, you know, sub-regional groupings, uh, made the clear decision that there should be 
able in the nearest future for Africa to produce its own medicine. It is a commitment. How do we make sure that, you know, they uphold that commitment and invest in what they need to invest? Yes, it is a beautiful commitment, but at the same time, we are skeptical. Why? Because in 2001, in the case of ECOWAS, for instance, in West Africa, the countries decided to invest at least 16% of their annual revenues in health infrastructure. From 2001 till today, none of the 16 or 15 countries, members of the ECOWAS, have met that threshold. Many other things, of course, you know, were done to improve health uh, 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 healthcare uh, structures, yes, but this was not met. And then finally, the food policy. We cannot continue to blame the war on Ukraine for the food prices in Africa or in many Africa, especially in the rainforest areas where you have massive amount of land and then we are not producing enough of food for direct and internal consumption. And very finally, in and here, what the African leaders or the African countries need to do, we need to find a way to resolve all these internal conflicts that are actually creating havoc or wrecking havoc on our nations. We need to find a solution to that. Maybe that is the way to encourage what is being done by local authorities to make sure that constitutions are not being amended unconstitutionally to create problems. Elections are held peacefully without people uh, shedding their blood or dying. And that uh, policies, uh, dissent are not uh, contained uh, with uh, violence, but people are listened to. That digital autocracy is not on the verge or on the rise, uh, but uh, control, uh, means, let's say control, let's say uh, people are free to speak. These are the things that, you know, internally, the African continent can do, uh, the African countries can do, to uh, make sure that, you know, uh, they strengthen peace and stability mechanism, they ensure more peace in those countries, uh, which will facilitate a better movement of a people, of a culture, of goods, of cooperation. This strength uh, will position the continent uh, to better deal with its external partners like India and others and Turkey, and finally have the pressure we believe they can have at the global stage when it comes to the United Nations, for instance. But as long as we continue to be weak that way, we continue to have this weak institution, this weak monetary systems that for some of them are even still dependent on the former colonial power, I think we will have been again trading so many things that we need, right, to address the issues of the declaration. This is my final word on that. Thank you. Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous.